good fish. Oh, good fish. There is our bait. Yeah, there we go. Fish on. Good, Taylor. Lovely. Want to touch? Oh, big tail. Holy moly. They're getting bigger. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Have a go there. G'day ladies and gents and welcome to another Sammy Hitsky fishing adventure. I recently spent two weeks with the family on beautiful Gari or Fraser Island and managed to catch some epic fish. Now, we did battle the weather and also the ocean weed quite a bit, which meant we had to do a lot of traveling to find places where we could actually fish. And even then, it was still a big old nuisance. But alas, we did still manage to sneak a few over, under and around it to get the job done. Also, being a family holiday, I did not film all of it. I was there just enjoying my fishing, but I still managed to capture some gold for you. So get comfortable and enjoy the show. On this day, we were cruising up the beach at low tide, looking for a nice shallow gutter for the kids to have a swim. As we went past one gutter, Brownie and I noticed some birds working some bait out around the back bank. The birds didn't hang around long, but we figured it was as good a spot as any for a fish and let the troops out to cool off while we had a cast. There was quite a bit of weed sitting deep behind the shore dump here, so high rod tips, skipping poppers and skipping metals would be the only way to avoid clogging up the lines and lures. We waded through the shallow gutter out to the bank and let fly with a few casts. Yes! Rip! It's a nice fish. Come on, stay in there, hooks. Stay in there, hooks. Brown, come give us a hand. It's a big one. Give us a hand. Get in behind it there. Get in behind it there, grab it. Ah yes, time for a good old fashioned big Taylor Sammy freak out. My fear was that because we were standing on a sandbank that had waves going over it the whole time, there was nowhere actually to beach the fish. So rather than trying to drag it all the way in and risk him shaking hooks like they seemingly always do, I thought I'd just get Brownie to grab him then and there. Grab him, grab him, grab him. It was a good idea, oh, I'll get him, I'll get him. in theory. Holy dooly! That is a big Taylor. Stroke! <laughs> Have a go at that. That is a cracker of a tailor. Big, solid, thick one. Good bit of length as well. Gonna measure it just on the uh, on the popper there. Gonna give it a measure, I reckon. It's missing a bit of the tail, but uh, we'll see how long it goes. Just on the middle of a bank here. Gonna release this fish. Be a big breeder for sure. So, keeping it wet. That's 70 centimetres. 70 centimetres, that's a really nice fish. So, you're going to put it on the back? 
Hey. Putting it in the bag? Yep. <clears throat> I can. Come on, mate. Out we go. Righto. Are you going to let him go? Surely am. Oh. Righto. 70 centimetres. Cracker fish. We're going to send him back. Don't need to eat this one. Here you go, big girl. Go. Oh. Watch out, we're just going to grab him if he's, if he's a bit sick. So just keep an eye out for him. Ready? He's not doing real well, we'll put him in this pool. Let him recover a bit. He's so cute. Oh. Oh. All right, all right. Let's see if he has a little swim. Yeah. You're not looking good. And then I thought he was a dolphin fish. And then I thought he was a tailor. Went through all the species. Unfortunately, after a good Come five on. or so minutes trying to nurse the big girl back to health, it still didn't look good. So I made the call to put her out of her misery and kept her for the table. A little bit later in the day, we found a relatively weed-free zone with some nice widening drains either side should the kids decide to have a cast themselves between swims. Brownie had managed to spin up a chopper tailor and we seized the opportunity to do something we talked about for at least three years, slide baiting. Circles, mate. Circles are good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is finally happening. My first proper crack at slide baiting. I've had this set up for about three years now. This is the first time I've been able to actually crack it out. Disclaimer, I've never done this, so I'm probably doing a heap of stuff wrong, but we're giving it a crack. Got me big grapple. Been told that uh, for your first go, you're not allowed to drone it out. You have to cast it, so I'm gonna give that a red hot nudge. Um, you'll see behind us, it's low tide. Should be able to get right out to the foam line of the back bank. Ideally, you'd like to go out past it, but I think it's a bit shallow at the moment. The bait wouldn't be able to swim across it. I've got me live tailor here. We've sourced it ourselves, and then once that sinker is all settled, I'll chuck it out on one of these and slide it out. Here we go. First step first, send it to the moon. Here we go. I'll see how far I get it. If it doesn't look like I've been, got very far, then I'm definitely gonna drone it because I've only got one bait. Gotta make it count. Here's a good spot at any. Oh. A good distance, I think. Oh no, now we let that sinker settle. Must have gone a bit of a way. Now I don't really know what to do here, but I'm pretty sure you just shake it around and get that grapple sinker to really dig in. Must have gone a fair way. Ish. Okay, Mr. Taylor, unfortunately for you, your time has come. Righto, so this is the rig, guys. 
Got a little stinger treble on the belly. It was advised to do that. Again, haven't done this before, so. The slide baiting concept is pretty simple. Once you launch that big grapnel sinker to the moon, it anchors your line. Then you can attach the non-return slide clip where it works its way out to the end of the line. Hats off to whoever dreamt this system up, it is pretty darn cool. Once your trace is attached, you have to try and create as much angle as possible, then shake and jig the rod tip to help the slide work its way out. It's a bit of a process and takes a little bit of time, but still good fun. A couple of hours later, and we had an inquiry. Is he on? Slack. Yeah, there we go. Fish on. We have a fish on, guys. It's not doing a great deal. I think it's a little shark. Backwards shark. Yeah, right. Well, there you go, that's not a mackerel. <laughs> Lassoed him. Cranky one, Tom, cranky. All right. Well, that's not a mackerel. It's a little, oh, just watching out for hooks there. A little shark of some description. Black tip, bronzy, shiny one. Anyways, first crack at slide baiting, sort of a success. Did this at Stratty. Had shark nuggets beer battered. Absolutely lovely. So this guy's coming with us. After a previous video keeping a shark, I'd been given the hot tip that removing the head, guts and tail was the best way to prep one for eating. So, this guy got the royal treatment, a quick rinse, and of course, some show and tell with the kids. Tommy, do you want to touch him? Yeah, you do. No fear for you. Right oh yeah, to the inside, yeah! Yeah. Did you not film the part where you... boy. Thank you. 
I cut the shark up that evening and we all smashed a big feed of shark nuggets. Very much a crowd favourite by this stage. We'd fill up the rest of the fish the following day. With the conditions looking good, Brownie, his son Ned and myself headed out for a dawn session in the hopes of tracking down a few more Taylor. It was a glorious morning, but the fishing was pretty slow and the weed was still a pain in the ass. But we persisted and chipped away. Here I am just about to cast my rig to New Zealand and catch a kingfish when, yep, you guessed it, a little too much pud and I cracked the line. Luckily, I managed to regather the rig and headed up the beach to retire. A quick knot and it was game on. Now, where are those choppers at? Yep, that just happened again, two in a row. Only this time the rig was well and truly out of reach. Back for a full re-rig this time. At least Brownie stuck the hooks into one while I was sulking back to the car. That's good. Costly. Because it's annoying. Lovely. With a few metres of line stripped off and a fresh rig tied on, I very gingerly cast out and was back playing the waiting game. Bang! My turn. There he is, there he is. Hello Mr. Chop, not a bad fish, he'll do. Lovely. Nice mid 40s chopper. Ah, it's on my hook, my sinker. Oh, he dug in. Yeah, I think I've got it out though. <sighs> my dad's is in here. Is it? I'm gonna join him. Let's hope they're just queuing up out the other side waiting to come in on the tide. Yeah. As it turned out, they weren't, and we fished for another 40 minutes without a decent hit. Time to head back to base, smash some brekkie, and round up the crew for some more low tide beach fun. Today's mission, give the whiting a proper flogging. When we finally got back out on the beach, the conditions were pretty much perfect for a whiting. Long shallow drains with a bit of wave action to stir up the sand. I personally didn't give the whiting dreams too much time to manifest as the call of a tailor was just too strong. It also ended an hour or so later without a hit. Luckily, little Neddy had taken charge and stuck to his guns. Righto guys, now my whiting session didn't really go to plan. Luckily, Brownie's son Neddy, the whiting king, managed to snare a few feeds. Mate, how did you do it? What did you use for bait? Worms. Use worms? And what, what was your secret? Nothing. Nothing? Well, some pretty good whiting here. How many did you catch? Mm, seven. Seven? That's not bad. Lovely feed a little summer whiting here. Neddy, cast out by himself. Were you baiting the hooks yourself as well? Mm. No? But you took the fish off, didn't you? Yeah. Credit to the little legend. Stuck it out. Came home with the goods. And now we got a, a lovely feed of fresh whiting. But the job's not over. you got to help us clean it now, don't you? Excellent. We better get to it. We got these guys. We got that guy and a couple other little choppers as well. That's what we call 
a fries are all in mixed bag. Mwah. Now, you guys would be keen to see another big tailor, right? Well, check out this doozy. A few days later, very similar situation to that first big one, cruising up the beach at low tide, saw some birds working out the back, pulled up for a cast, waded through the gutter. Third cast, I hooked what I thought was probably a queenfish or maybe even a rogue trevally. Fought it for a while, took some good runs, was fighting hard. It was at that stage I remembered I actually had a camera on my head and should probably turn it on, and that's where we pick up. Check it out. Oh, big Taylor. Good Taylor. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. Holy dooly, they're getting bigger. <laughs> now, I definitely wanted to release this one, so I didn't take any chances keeping it in the water and trying to be as fast as possible. Woo! That is a big, big tailor. That is. Ho! Oh. 79, it's a 79 centimetre tailor. That is a beauty. Get these hooks out. Let's get the big girl back. Maybe a touch too fast though, as I forgot to hold it up for the camera. Here we go. Come on. Yeah, there she goes. 79er. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily I did get a photo and what a fish it was, my second biggest tailor to date. With fish like that out there, I figured it was only fair that I take Taylor Tommy out for a crack. Do you want to come with Dad? Dad. Fish? Do you want to come for a fish? Yeah, yeah okay. We'll put, put your dry hat on today, it might help. Is he not happy? No. You want to leave your hat off? Okay, well let's just stay in the heat and then stay there. Bye-bye! You fish? Bye! So you happy? Yeah, you happy? Yeah? Are you going to catch some fish? Yeah! Wow. Okay, Tom. It's Big Taylor time. Big Taylor time. No 
maybe no fish. But Daddy wants a fish. Yeah, we want a fish. Where the fish? Man. We want a fish. We got a fish! We got a fish! We got one, Tom! We got a fish! We got one! We got a fish! Yay! Yay! Look Tom! See it? Fishy! Yay! Wow! Fish! Bit of teamwork. Tommy giving me the uh, the good oil on where to cast. We got a little GT. Hey Tommy, what's this? What's this? Tommy, here. What's this? Is it a fish? Fish? Yeah, fishy. Want to touch? Hang on. Touch. Let me take the hooks out first. Righto, hooks are out. Tommy, touch. He's alright. Say so touch. Touch his nose. No? Okay, we let him go? No. Touch him? No. Let's let him go. Bye, fish. Bye bye. Oh, we might give him a hand. Oh. Go fish, bye fish! Bye! Bye! Good job, high five! Yeah! Oh, and now for the unplanned part of the release. Whoops, sorry mate. Whoops, the daisies! Did you see the birdie? How was the size of that tailor? An absolute donkey. All in all, a bloody great trip. We didn't catch a heap of fish, but we got some really nice quality. Now, I didn't take any more footage, but I took some photos, so I thought I'd quickly run through the rest of our trip so you guys can kind of piece together and see how we went. This lot we found when we met up with good mates, Rushy and Timbo. And the same old story, low tide, Found the birds, found the bait, and the tailor weren't far behind. A couple of nice fish in the mix there, a 60 each for Brownie and I, and the rest were just good solid choppers. Now aside from the 79 and the 70 centimetre fish, this was my third biggest of the trip. A big fat 65er caught bait fishing at night with Brownie and Greg. We only caught three other fish that session, but they are all pretty solid fish. And well, this picture's just too cute not to show you.
Now these fish all came from a short little power session off Indian Head. All caught spinning with that minnow there, which is a Duo 170 Ghost Minnow. Cracking little lure for spinning off the stones. Hey guys, just wanted to share a couple of quick tips with you before we round out this episode. The beach obviously is a very harsh environment and it takes its toll on your tackle, particularly your reel. So here's what I do to help minimize the damage. Now the first thing is, and this is something I do while I'm on the trip, uh, it's not gonna suit everyone, but if you've got access to fresh water like a hose or you can jerry-rig something up off a, uh, off a jerry can or a water bottle, get yourself some of this. This is the Soldier Captain Engine Flush and give your reels a really thorough rinse down. That helps displace any of the salt um, that's sitting on there and gives them a real good clean. And then I'll let them drip dry or you can wipe them dry if you want. Then I'll give them a hit with this. This is Salty Captain Captain Seal. It's a lanolin based product. But what you want to do is give any of your metallic parts or moving parts on the outside of your reel a good hit. Now, it's as simple as just a little dribble in there. Anywhere that looks like it could corrode, you want to give it a little hit. Your bail arm assembly there, that's always a big one. Any screws, your handle in these little pinion gears and, and whatnot. Anywhere that moves, give it a good old little drink and then grab yourself a cloth and just wipe off any excess. Now if you do that, that's gonna help get rid of the salt out of the moving parts. It's also gonna prevent corrosion while you're on the trip. Also, fully recommend doing this once you get home as well. So that way when you chuck that reel in storage, it's gonna be as good as gold, ready to rock and roll the next time you pull it out. There's a little hot tip for you, guys. Your reels will thank you for it. Get around it. As you can see, guys, Gari rarely disappoints and always special to share that time with the family as well. If you haven't been there, make sure you plan a trip because it is an absolute epic place. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you're all safe and well, and I'll catch you next week for another Sammy Hitsky fishing adventure. Cheers. Taylor, big, solid, thick one. Good bit of length as well. Going to give it a measure, I reckon.